We're live from the Housing Wire News Desk at MBA Annual. I'm thrilled to welcome Jim Rosen of Mortgage Cadence to this edition of Housing Wire Instant Impact. Jim, could you briefly introduce yourself and Mortgage Cadence? Sure, thanks, Diego. Uh, my name is Jim Rosen. I'm head of uh, product and services at Mortgage Cadence. That means I work with our product managers and oversee all of our third-party provider integrations. And Mortgage Cadence is a uh, you know one of the premier LOSs that maybe you haven't heard of. We're, we're we're not one of the big ones, but we're you know maybe number three. We have a you know complete lending ecosystem, everything from a point of sale. Um, pro product and pricing engine, as well as uh, document preparation, document management. So one-stop shop for all of your lending needs and origination needs in the Mortgage Cadence platform. Now, there's a lot of buzz about AI yes. in mortgage, a lot of buzz, but not many practical use cases yet. Yeah. Uh, how is Mortgage Cadence integrating AI in a practical way mm -hmm. into the LOS? Yeah, it's it's there's a lot of talk, but not a lot of things that are actionable at this point that you can you can point to. So, you know, we're taking a couple of different tracks or tacks that, that we're trying to understand and harness and deliver the power, because the promise and the power is there. It's just how do you bundle it up and make it accessible? So, you know, immediately some of the things that we're doing is is integrating the generative AI and access for our support teams and for our our uh, developers, our coders. So what we're seeing is, is a lot of inside out approach with AI, whereas lenders are doing this, other providers are doing this. So how do you make what you do better, faster, and without sacrificing quality? So, you know, we have tons of documentation, like you might imagine, if our support team can access that information accurately and quickly, our lenders get a better support experience, they're more accurate, you know, we get that, that satisfaction up because they're getting the answers they need quickly. Um, for our developers, they're able to produce code and develop features that are more consistent, higher quality, uh, less turn time you know, in, in terms of delay and, and that sort of thing. Now, the other thing that we're doing is working with our Accenture partners. They've invested a lot of money over the last two or three years just dipping their toes in, finding the, the capabilities and, and refining some of those use cases. And so working with Accenture and then the market, what we're also finding is lenders are on the same sort of journey. What's there? How is this meaningful to them? Where are the risks? and how do they mitigate those risks. So with Accenture and, and the LOS view, um, we're working with the, the industry to help them develop governance, mm -hmm. understand what the governance pit, pitfalls and requirements are so we can be compatible with that. And then really on the LOS side, building a framework that they can bring their AI into. Because one of the big things is how do you secure the data? How do you make sure that the thing that you're doing that's interesting and unique stays interesting and unique and doesn't become source for another model out there? So we've learned in the past where, you know, when we attempt to come to a conversation in a relationship and say, well, you might have your thing, use our thing, um, it doesn't go so well, right? Lenders have their own relationships and their own governance, and we need to respect that. So that's really the framework option. But with Accenture behind us, if you don't have that, we've got a solution that, that they can tap into. Let's talk about Accenture a little more. You have yeah. a unique relationship with them. Very much so, yes. Tell us how that relationship augments your ability to integrate new technology, yeah. specifically AI. Well, what it does is it, is it really gives us a research and development set of resources and, and capabilities that if we were just an LOS by ourselves or our you know, 300 employees, it would be very challenging to commit those resources for any extended period of time and make any sort of real valuable discovery. So with the power of Accenture behind us, we've got access to a ton of different market verticals as well as resources from a people, as well as financial resources to invest in discovery, right? Just finding something, seeing how it works, where is their utility, going to the market to get that feedback. And then as the LOS, we can partner with our Accenture uh, teams to say, what have you found? Where is it interesting? What are the conversations? And then we have our very narrow view around the LOS compared to other industry verticals. And we can say, this might be useful here and then bring that to market. So. It's a challenging market, and it's been that way for a couple of years. It has. Um, and so um, there's conforming loans, yep. uh, which everyone is scrambling to get a piece of. Yeah. Um, but then there's the non-traditional borrowers, right. um, which may be an, a market opportunity for a lot of your clients. How do you allow, enable your clients to tap into that non-traditional borrower? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've heard in the day that we've been here so far, um, the, the self-employed consumer borrower being a challenge that everybody is trying to 
solve. Solve with efficiency, solve with automation. It's the gig economy. Right, it's a gig economy, yeah. right? How do you qualify somebody that you know drives Uber on a weekend and does some other sort of thing, right? It's, it's not a, your traditional W-2. So um, you know, some of the things that we're bringing to the table are the configurable LOS in and of itself first, right? First it's, we have an LOS that lets you do the conforming. If it fits in the box, it's great. But we've got a, 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 you know, a rules engine and automation that allows a lender to configure that system to do the self-employed and other non-traditional scenarios with as much automation as you can fit within the conventional space. And then we're bringing data extraction and some other technologies to help that lender you know, pull information off that 1099 and integrate those into the system, making documents Everybody's got to stare at them and look at them, but how do you automate? Well, that's what we're bringing in as a solution to bring them in and, and take data extraction and, and just like you would pull off of a, an interface, pull the data off the document and make those automatable. Now, you're probably a year or two into your integration of AI yeah. into your tech stack, yeah. but many lenders are still in the first inning. Very much. If they've even started playing the game. I, I think in the last, I would say last call it six to eight months, right? Um, we've been having a lot of conversations with our customers and, and in the market and some of these um, you know, conventions. And, and what we're hearing is they're very early. Yep. Um, they're also tapped when it comes to resources to do research for research sake. They, lenders understand that they need access to technology and the ability to do more loans with the same number of people be more efficient, drive down costs where they can, and that's the promise of AI. Can I do more with the same people I have? Can I do you know, better things without sacrificing quality? So they're, they're trying to investigate, they're, and, and Accenture is bringing a lot of help there to just help them on that journey, not to replace it, but help them on that journey and, and provide the expertise and the resources we have. But I think, yeah, you're right, they're, they're probably another 12 months or so before people are, are actually trying to make this a part of their lending operation and probably a little bit even further away unless we get some, you know, some regulation and, mm -hmm. and some, some guidance from regulators from having that AI break that customer lender barrier, right? So for now, it's all inside. How do, how do lenders be more efficient? How do you get information to somebody so they, they have a full picture of what the options are versus having them go to like a search engine or trying to flip through guidelines and equipping your employees and lenders and loan officers to be more efficient and, and knowledgeable. You mentioned regulation, that's really a key point here. I think it because is. Because no lender wants to get stuck with a fair lending issue because they're the first right. to mess around with AI. Yeah. So how do you coach and provide best practices to your clients yeah. so that they can kind of get off the starting line? Well, at the end of the day, it's technology, right? Lenders are evaluating technology, using technology. This is just different technology. So all the rules around you know, fair lending and federal regulation, they still apply. You're still on the hook for those things. You can't stand behind the technology and go, well, I didn't know. So it's really around, you know what you need to do, and then make sure the technology you're evaluating isn't contra to what you know applies to you, right? All right, so you're here talking to a lot of clients, yep. a lot of prospects. What are you sharing with them about your 2025 product roadmap mm -hmm. that's getting them excited? You know, I think one of the things that we're investing in on that cost reduction, being more efficient, our mid-market offering called the Essentials. It's a it's an offering on MCP comes out in the spring, so that's exciting. So our enterprise lenders are going to benefit from that because we've we've taken an, an effort to simplify managing the LOS. You know, previous to our mid-market offering, we um, you know it took a it took a little bit of technical expertise to make the LOS do what you wanted it to do, and what we need to do is make it easier to do that. So that. That comes out in, in the spring. And then, you know, we're continuing to look at, you know, value added integrations with third parties. There's a lot of them here today where they're, they're bringing exciting new capabilities to the conversation where, you know, as an LOS, I don't necessarily want to do it, but I do want to give access to my lenders to do that and to make sure that they can access those technologies. The energy here seems pretty good. Yeah, it's, it, it is interesting. I will say, you know, been to a couple of these, been around for a little bit. The gray hair is, is evidence, but um, I think this, this year, I'm, I'm more unsure of what the future holds for this industry. You know, the, the state of rates and, you know, the, the locked in effect and where everybody is and what's going to happen with volume. There's just a lot of uncertainty and I feel that as well, but I've never been more excited because there's just so many other folks who have come in when we talk about FinTech with new ideas and there's new technology and AI making the previously impossible, it's conceivable, right? So there's a lot of excitement but a lot of uncertainty now. And I think that's the energy you feel. It's like, 
where can I take advantage and where can we where can we move the needle? All right, well, let's leave it there on that note of optimism. Yes. Jim, great to catch up. Thanks so much, Jim. All right.